All right, so here we are in the garage. It is cold outside, just finishing up polishing. If you recall, you've seen the other videos, I used 3M rubbing compound with a white pad and then the 3M machine polish with the black top and the black pad. If you want to even have a finer machine polish, which is a blue top with a blue pad. But I think the results on this were really, really good. Take a look at the car before in some videos, and this was all super, super hazy, especially the trunk was awful. And it has come back, well, like new, I suppose. There's some little area here that looks like it was spotted in, a spot repair many, many years ago, a little bit discolored. And then there's some, for those who've been watching, there's some burn through marks there where the previous owner Somebody polished it and didn't necessarily know what they're doing, but those can be repaired. Really no burn through marks on this side at all. Somebody was a bit more aggressive on the driver's side, although still looks good. Now, one tip, if you get hologramming, especially on black car, I hate black cars. They're so hard to get to look uniform in the natural sunlight. It's one thing when you look at it under the fluorescent lights, and you can see some hologramming under bright fluorescent lights, but you really see it when you pull the car out in the direct sunlight. And after you do the rubbing compound and the machine polish, you're going to still have some light hologramming. What you do is, after you've done the machine polish, you really start in the last bit of the rubbing compound, you start pulling up almost in the polisher to take the weight off it. My, my polisher is an old Milwaukee polisher that weighs... Oh my goodness, I don't know, 15 pounds. It's pretty heavy, maybe more. So whenever I'm doing these cars, I don't really even push. I just let the weight of the polisher do the work. And then as you get toward the end and you want to get rid of any potential hologramming, you turn the speed down on the buffer. I turn it all the way down and you start lifting the polisher. So if I turn the speed all the way down and I have the polish on the car, the wheel won't spin. If I start pulling up and relieving the weight of the polisher, it'll start spinning and it'll spin slowly. So you want it to spin slowly and you also don't want to have much weight on it. So do that for the compound and you do that for the last pass in the machine polish too. Slower speed, take the weight off the polisher. You'll still have some minor hologramming, but it'll be pretty minor. And then what I like to use is this. Race glaze, polish, and sealant. And I find that once I go over this, I use one of these applicators and I go horizontally on these surfaces in straight lines. I don't go and do the circles. I just go straight lines back and forth. And then I go through a lot of these rags that I get from Costco. They get dirty and it's like 15 bucks a pack when they're on sale for, I don't know, 100 of them. So they don't really wash up very well. I just discard them. But then I do that with the race glaze and after I wipe it off, I find there's really no hologramming at all. And you can see the result. I mean, this car looks great. <laughs> I used to think that this Mercury here, the 74 Mercury was pretty shiny, but you can see this one, I haven't polished this one at all. But look at this black compared to this black, how much shinier this one is and how it reflects the lights. This one, you can see a very slight haze starting. It just needs to be polished. And this one is newly polished. So now the last step on this is after I go through, go around and like I said, on this passenger side, for whatever reason, somebody didn't really burn through anywhere on the polisher on any of these surfaces but I'll go through well they did burn through here but I will go over and just touch up those little areas and the hood looks really nice too and remember this was a barn find so it does have little you know imperfections in the paint up close that you're just not going to get out like there was some um, rodent dung on the hood you know at some point in some spots and uh you know that's just that's life but i mean 
and I haven't cleaned with a toothbrush in here, you know, really well yet, so I gotta do that, but this is a, <laughs> this is an old car, 1968, so it is 54 years old, and I think, I mean, look at the reflection. So I would say, again, I'm not the best at this. I think, you know, on a scale of 1 to 10, I, I, the job I do is probably a, I don't know, 7.5 or 8. If I were taking a car to a concourse d'Elegance, no, I would not be the person to do the job. Just because I don't have the patience to get the toothbrush and all these little grooves and to spend the time hand doing it as well as somebody else would. I will say that these are the pain doing, if anybody's got a good suggestion for how to go around lettering, aside from just doing this totally by hand and taking a long time, uh, <laughs> and then going over with a toothbrush to get all this crap out, you can still see it's got you know, the polish in there that I have to go through with the toothbrush. I also always be sure on these Ford cars in particular to go around these emblems by hand because if the polisher starts getting on, especially with the rubbing compound, on this face, this clear plastic face, it's not going to look that good anymore. I mean, this emblem is brand new almost. The car's got 9,000 miles. You're not going to find another one on eBay. This is a unique 1968 LTD part. Good luck finding another. So I'm really happy with how the car turned out. Again, like this stuff is not going to come out. This is, you know, to the touch you can... You can feel it. This is really the only spot on the car that has this. I suspect there was a rodent's nest on here, you know, and the rodent dung and everything kind of corroded the paint. But that's, you know what, this is patina. And I'm really happy with how the car turned out. Just a beautiful shine. Vinyl top's perfect. Interior, I've done just a light clean. I've yet to steam clean it. But, I mean, it's just phenomenal. So this is one of those cars where I got this on Facebook Marketplace. And I would guess the buyers who came to see it just shied away from it because it looked terrible. And the paint was really, really hazy. It was just nasty. But as you can see, I mean, this is a great Survivor original car with great luster. I mean, I wouldn't be ashamed to take this car anywhere. They're only original once. So I think, you know, I can have somebody, I've got a really good paint guy and I think that they can just spot these little things in pretty well. It won't be perfect, but it'll be better than it is. I really just want to preserve the as much original paint as I can. I think these little things add to the story of the car. Probably something, it just is a different texture here as I rub my hand over it. So I would guess that something bumped on here, you know, had a dent and somebody sanded it and spotted in this area. Many, many years ago, because this is single stage as well. And these little things tell a story. This is, that's just from it being in a barn. This, I think, also is some sort of probably animal dung was up here for many, many years and just corroded things. But, I mean, what do you expect? It's a 54-year-old car. I think it looks pretty gosh darn good. You can take a look at the driver's side as well. This is where, if you saw in the other videos, a few burn through marks like here and here where somebody got pretty aggressive with a polisher that were there before I did anything. Not much I can do aside from repainting it. I'm just gonna leave these. I think it's character. I mean, the car looks so good. Nothing wrong with a little character on your original car. And like these little Mars and things from being in the barn. In any case, thanks again for watching. It just looks like glass on many of these panels here. Looks great. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more.
especially as I go through the mechanicals. This car needs a carburetor rebuild, new power valve, new accelerator pump. You step on it and it dies, it stalls out when you step on the accelerator. And then it's pretty lean. I think the power valve is stuck. So I got a carb kit coming. The auto light, this is a two barrel carburetor. These auto light two barrels are super easy to repair and rebuild. Kind of an hour job. Stay tuned for more.